Hey, so um, as I said, my name is Birgit Odrisko and I work for the Environmental Education Unit of Antoshka, which is um, actually a really nice job. I was uh, only thinking about today that I've been here working with Antoshka for the last 20 years nearly, and um, I'm still really enjoying it very much. So the unit uh, overall, we deliver environmental education programs to lots of different aspects of the community. We work with local communities on the Clean Coast programs. We work with uh, young people on Young Reporters for Environment with Green Campuses uh, students and also secondary school students. We work with local communities and students, primary and secondary, with learning about forest program, National Spring Clean, I'm sure you're all aware of. And of course, we work with the local authorities to deliver the Blue Flag program for our beaches. Uh, so there's lots, lots going on in the unit. But uh, what we're going to talk about today is mostly the Green Schools program, which I used to be able to say is our most successful program. But Clean Coast are uh, nearly overtaking us because they're doing really, really well as well with local groups all around the coast of Ireland doing fantastic work. Um, so the Green Schools program, uh, it's a partnership. Uh, our most important partners are obviously the schools because it's you that are doing the work that is so, so important to, to all of us um, and to support our, um, our environment. Um, so uh, you are the most important people. And then secondly, as you just heard, Kleena from Wexford County, Council and local authorities are really, really important partners to us as well, because there is about 16 or 17 of us who are working on the Green Schools core program. We have lots of travel officers, as you might be aware, but they can only work on the travel team. So for all the other teams, there's only 16 of us. And as you will see in the next slide, there is more than three and a half thousand schools registered to the program. So without the environmental awareness officers in the local authorities, we would not be able to run the program. So their support is really, really vital to us. Then uh, as Antoshka, uh, our main body is a charity, actually the oldest charity in the world, in Ireland, and um, possibly the world actually, um, but I can't remember that for sure. So don't take my word for that. But we are, uh, we were established in um, 1947 or 48. We were 75 years old this year, um, which is wonderful achievement. Uh, but because we are a char charity and not-for-profit organization, we are fully reliant on funding. So we get a lot of funding from through various different government departments, and we have some uh, corporate sponsors as well, such as Clothespot and the Wrigley Company. But Irish Aid are our main sponsors for the Global Citizenship Litter and Waste team for the last 15 years, and their support is, is really um, great for us to be able to run the program. So as I said already, over 18, 89% of all the schools in Ireland are registered to the program. Uh, we used to be able to say over 94, but you know, there's changes, schools are amalgamating and um, you know, some schools drop off for various reasons, but then they re-engage re again. Last year, we actually awarded 74 first green flags. So 74 schools that re-engage with the program. And I was reading somewhere during the week on our system that we have about 94% of secondary schools working on the program now as well, which is really wonderful. So I just like to emphasize and just show this picture that even I think it's important that you know, even if you are in a small school with uh, seven pupils or you're in a huge school with more than a thousand pupils, everyone plays their part in creating all these wonderful changes uh, for and promoting uh, the, um, the Irish environment and the global environment, environment as you hopefully will find out through this team that you're going to start working on. So here is some savings that we were able to uh, establish from the application forms that you filled in, uh, which I know uh, everyone always complains about and I can understand why, but it is really, really important to us that you fill these out because as you heard, um, we are reliant on funding. So we do need to be able to show uh, the funders that um, we have an impact. And as you see here, the impact is amazing, you know, 70 77% of students 
understanding ways to how they can help biodiversity, which they might even have heard the word biodiversity before and uh, growing food and and learning about marine litter and what they can do, even if they're an inland school about it. But for global citizenship, it's a lot about learning, increasing knowledge on what global citizenship education means, and learning about the sustainable development goals and engaging with different countries as well through our global classrooms program, which I'll talk about a little bit more late, later on. So then uh, we were able to establish some um, so a nice infographic on what the global citizenship team has, um, 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 was up to last year. So you see 156,000, more than 156,000 students taking climate action. Uh, and that's only from the global citizenship uh, energy team, So which is amazing. Um, uh, 992 schools that were working on the global citizenships uh, teams, increasing of knowledge by 35%. Um, so it has been really, really successful. And uh, we engaged over 15,000 students in our uh, Global Goals Week uh, last year, which I'll speak about a little bit further later on as well, that will be open to all the schools as well. So um, as you know, um, once you register for the Green Schools program, you can, we'll never let you go, unfortunately. So uh, it's a long-term program requiring whole school action. You start with your litter and waste team, then you move on to energy, water, travel, biodiversity, and you have landed at your sixth team, global citizenship, litter and waste. So basically how the global citizenship, litter and waste team came about was I was, I was actually asked to to create a standalone team on global citizenship education about 15 years ago now, I'd say, and um, started working away with that and, you know, ended up, it's such a big fairy team. There's so many things that you can look into that I ended up having a handbook that was about an inch thick and with loads and loads of suggestions. And I piloted it with four schools that were long-term schools of the program. And they basically did everything that was in the handbook. And I said, we can't go on like this because we can't overload the schools with the work. The, the best thing about the Green Schools program is basically that you go according to the seven steps, you work on it for two years. Some years you might do loads and loads for one of the steps and other years you might do the minimal for each of the steps. But it's a continuous learning of uh, uh, new knowledge. Um, so we felt that um, we couldn't keep uh, loading the schools up with new teams. So with the Global Citizenship, uh, we decided then to go back to previous teams because teachers had been asking us to, uh, if they were able to go back to the previous teams. And um, our experience was generally that um, going into schools, if they started working on litter and waste, even if you came back 10 years later, it was still in place. And you will be surprised even if you sit there now quavering in your boot saying, oh my goodness, you know, we haven't kept up that litter and waste properly. You will be surprised and pleasantly surprised because it's very hard to go back to bad um, habits in the first place. So generally they were kept up. So we said for long-term schools, they can go back to litter and waste, maybe, you know, um, uh, support the students uh, that are new to the school that have never done the litter and waste team, but add this global uh, citizenship uh, di di uh, dimension to it so that they can look into um, the problems, environmental problems a little bit further. Drawing on existing expertise, it should be a reduced workload because the litter and waste team, generally, it only needs a little bit of tweaking and it, you will be back up to where you were 10 years ago. And with this team as well, we really try to promote linking to the curriculum as much as possible because citizenship education, especially in primary school, is literally in every year. It's, it's addressed. So... Um, why global citizenship education? I changed this quote, uh, you know, maybe every couple of years, but I'm back to the one that I started with because I do actually think it's one of the most powerful ones uh, from Martin Luther King, who said, before you finish eating your breakfast in the morning, you've depended on more than half the world. Think about, you know, where does your electricity come from to make sure that your battery on your phone is charged um, uh, in order for 
for the phone to um, be able to ring the alarm so that you can wake up, which uh, definitely with the changing weather, I have a few mornings now I've really needed the alarms, whereas in the summer I never need an alarm. Um, what you're eating for your breakfast, you know, how we are connected to all the different uh, uh, areas of the globe and people in the, in the globe. So um, I see people taking notes. You, you will get this uh, presentation sent to you. Uh, so it'll it'll be shared. Uh, Siobhan, have you got that ready to share in the chat? Yeah, yeah. So it will be shared in the chat and you can download it from the chat uh, towards the end. So, um, so we'll be looking at active citizenship, which is getting involved in your local communities and democracies at all levels, which you're already doing through your green schools work, because it needs to be whole school action. So even that alone is, you know, getting everyone in the school involved in, in some, even if it's in a small way, but making connections with tidy towns groups, which no doubt you've all uh, done over the past couple of years or any other local communities putting things in the newsletters and um, that is all part of being an active citizen and um, global citizenship then it's more a moral understanding of our responsibilities and our rights in a global context because citizen, being a citizen of your country there is laws that we have to abide by. So, you know, we are not allowed to litter on the street, even though we don't always get the fines that should be given out, but uh, we are doing it and it's a law. Uh, on a global scale, it's not that clear cut. So it's basically a moral understanding of our responsibilities and our rights in a global context. So very interesting uh, topics to look at. Uh, and I will give you some ideas in how you can look at this, even with the youngest uh, children in the school. Um, but it's about understanding that we all have equal rights and, you know, basically that we're not on a level playing field um, and we should uh, value diversity. So um, that those are the things that you're going to be looking at. If we go a little bit deeper than what is global citizenship education, it used to be referred to as development education. I don't know if any of you have ever uh, done anything around development edu education. I'm sure you have. But in the last couple of years, they kind of changed the term to call it global citizenship education because it's very strongly aligned to uh, education for sustainable development. So development education was always kind of more focused towards the human side. And for me, Global citizenship education means that you can also bring in the um, the environmental side. So it addresses the uh, root causes and the consequences of poverty, inequality, conflict and environmental issues. And often poverty and environmental degradation go hand in hand. They're intrinsically linked. So it's about recognizing that we're all interconnected and dependent on people and places all around the world. And most importantly, that it's not a level playing field. Um, so the things that you will be looking at through um, what you're trying to develop, and, and you are trying to develop that in within the curriculum anyway, and there will be even a stronger focus on developing these uh, different skills, but we call them our 21st century skills that are really, really important and they are lacking in the workforce. But it's about developing critical thinking skills, looking at real life problem solving, system thinking skills. So where is the root cause to, you know, that it's not the children's fault that, you know, there's environmental degradation if they buy a certain project, a, a product that they see on the market. So it's all these topics that you see here, justice, rights, solidarity, sustainability, you will be addressing true the development of the 21st century skills uh, through you know some of the things that we are offering but also through engaging maybe with some of the global uh, classroom project or with the global course book club which i will talk about a little bit later but these are all the skills that we are trying to address in all the, the materials that we are putting forward so i think i went too far no i'm going to back so um as I said, it was called development education before, and there is there have been numerous amazing organizations around uh, the country and around the world, basically, but around here within Ireland that have been developing resources to uh, look at these different topics. 
and they have been all collated by a fantastic organization called developmenteducation.ie on that website that you can see there and very easy to find materials there so whatever you can find on our website that we don't have we don't put all of these on our website because they're there and um, there are some wonderful resources that are there all around these various topics so it's they're all these are all suggestions i don't want you to go away tonight now being totally overwhelmed and saying oh i have to do all of these things you don't okay it's just one or two something might take your fancy it might be a short little classroom activity or it might be something that you bring out to the whole school but i'm just saying that there's some amazing resources available there on ethical consumption and production global citizenship and active citizenship uh, sustainable development goals social justice and inequality and i know they're really big topics and sometimes um it is like I have noticed from teachers and also from myself that sometimes you say like, well, I don't know enough about that to address that. But what is so, so important um, in um, with all these very difficult and important topics is that we make it discussable because children are aware of, of all these difficult problems that they are seeing all around them. So um, I'm going to take a little break because I saw Ella coming in. Ella? Hi, Birgit. How are you? Hi, Ella. Hi, Hi. So Ella is the Environmental Awareness Officer in Waterford, and I'm sure you'd like to say hello, would you? I'd love to. Um, just <laughs> briefly, um, I won't interrupt too much. Uh, I know when you're on a flow, it's nice to keep going. Um, just to say welcome to all the Waterford schools. Um, I'm sure you're told to have a chance to get back and have another look at litter and waste. It's probably developed an awful lot particularly the waste side of things since we last tackled it. Um, if you need gloves, bags, litter pickers, um, we also do workshops on litter or waste. Um, so if you, you want to contact us for anything along the way, I will pop my details in the chat. Um, we also have some good resources on our website on both fast fashion and take three for the sea um, is a little one. They're both teachers resources. Um, so please do take a look at them. But as I say, I'll pop my details in the chat if you want to get in touch for any reason, please do. Thanks very much, Bridget. The take three, I'm delighted to hear that the take three for the sea is still going, Ella, that's brilliant. Yeah, we get great feedback on that one because it covers so many topics yeah. um, from like single use plastics to everything and anything really this yeah brilliant yeah. yeah it would be really relevant for this team as well and it's nice that it's so local it's community based and it's so local and i i you know we're talking about the, the developing the 21st century skills what is really important is tapping into children's own curiosity what they're curious about and if it's happening in their own locality that is you know really good so and you might put the the link to that uh in in the chat as well would you I will do. I'll, I'll yeah, pop, pop that in there. Thank great. You. Thanks, Ella. Thanks a million. So, um, so yeah, guys, definitely look local as much as possible. And as I said earlier on, the environmental awareness officer around the country, they're invaluable support to the schools, really. And as you hear from Ella there now, you have all these local based um, uh, projects that are going on. And it's lovely to be involved with a, a global project like global, uh, green schools and eco schools. But again, for children, uh, you know, developing their own uh, curiosity in their own areas is the best way to to uh, engage them on any of these topics. And it's very, very relevant. So, um, so then what we have been doing over the past couple of years as we have been framing all of our work around the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, the Sustainable Development Goals are not to be all and end all, but we were very impressed. They are... They came out of uh, as a direct result from the Millennium Development uh, Goals uh, that lasted until that started in 2000 and lasted until 2015. And um, it were delegations from Kenya and Ireland who actually gathered uh, groups together to come up with these goals, these 17 goals for sustainable development. 
And what really caught me about this one is when I did my environmental science degree in college oh, a very long time ago, I, I don't even know when, but um, we were really taught about how the environment and poverty and zero hunger were all so intrinsically linked. Uh, and from the Millennium Development Goals, I felt that it was very much focused on the human aspect only, which was great as well. But I always felt there was something lacking. So when I when we, these came out in 2015, uh, agreed by uh, nearly every every world leader, uh, which was which is brilliant. Uh, you know, you might say, oh, it's only lip service, but it's not because it's something that has been uh, written down um, that they have said they agree. So if you have great communities, they can constantly go back and I to them and say, listen, you're not doing enough there. And I know I am part of the SDG stakeholder uh, forum that we attend every year. And um, we always do that to the government. And, you know, there is progress being made all the time. So um, we were delighted and this year to be um, selected as, as one of Ireland's SDG champions for 23-24. So we're definitely doing more and more promotion and advocating of the SDG this year and uh, acting hopefully as a good practice example on how other organizations can contribute. So we hope to get your help in this, uh, this year. So uh, I'm going to skip this one because I don't want to be running late. Um, so implementing the program. As I said already, the seven steps of the program are the most important aspect of the program. There is method behind that madness. The seven steps are based on environmental management and auditing system that has been in, in uh, use in industry I can, I think I can nearly say 70, uh, 40 years at least at this stage. And it's about not just having top down approach to creating change, but having a whole organization approach to taking change. So every view on the table is, is taken into account, no matter whether it's the, 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 the person who, who um, stands on the, the, what you would call it, the, what you call that when they would have to, do things on a line, like I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you know what I mean. It's been a long day, everyone. But uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the CEO of a company, they all speak together, cleaners. And that is what we ask you to do with the Green Schools Committee as well. You want to have as varied uh, different views as possible on your Green Schools Committee uh, to have input in this process. So, um, it's a structured program because we ask you to go according to the seven steps, uh, but it's flexible because how you fit in those seven steps is totally up to you. It, it, it will vary from school to school. We have preschools working on the program. Obviously, it's going to be different in a preschool than it is going to be in a big secondary school or for that matter, in a university. Um, so it's very structured, but it's flexible. It's about how you want to fill in those seven steps. And as I said earlier, we understand that you cannot be at the crest of the wave all the time. You can't be doing, oh, everything is about green school because that's not why the children are going to school. They basically are going to school to learn to read and write, which is really important. But this is also very important. And we are very grateful that you're keeping this up. So that's why we're saying, don't worry about um, how much you do for each of the seven steps. Uh, just as long as you do something for each of them, it qualifies you to apply for the flag. So step one, your Green Schools Committee. Uh, obviously, uh, students are the most important uh, people on the committee. It needs to be student-led. So um, the more control you can hand over to the students, the better. Um, the matter, the ideas, you know, I know it's going to be harder work on you to dampen them down a bit and try to make them workable. But uh, if they really take full control over what it is they can do, it I've seen it. Um, I've I've seen it in so many schools. Like if the children are in control, it's it's the best. Um, optional then maybe other teaching staff, non-teaching staff, principal. I suppose if you're in a small school, the principal might be involved a little bit more. But um, 
you know, as long as you have to go ahead from them that they say yes, it's a good thing. I'd like I'd like to work on the Green Schools program. That's very important that you, uh, they back you in your work. Uh, caretakers very important on the um, on the program, especially if you're working on litter and waste or energy or water, and they know what is going on. Uh, pa parents and community members, I can't recommend enough because you have no idea what kind of specialities there might be in the parent bodies. Uh, I was in the school once where uh, actually I, when I was uh, piloting this aspect of the uh, global citizenship team where we linking back to previous teams and I was working with the school and we were working on water and the coordinator asked me to come in to speak to her uh, to explain it a little bit further and there was a person sitting next to her who she said well this is a parent of the community and he um he um he's also part of the green schools committee and i said great so he started asking me very probing questions like oh and how are you going to measure this and what are you going to measure that and i was going to go well well i did know all the answers but it turned out he was an environmental um he worked for an environmental um he was, he was an environmental officer for some kind of protection agency. It was, he wasn't working with the EPA, but it was some other uh, company. So he knew what he was talking about. But uh, he was wonderful. He supported that teacher so much throughout the year. He did workshops with the kids. He explained things to the kids. Actually, I had him a couple of years on my teacher training summer course to give lectures because he was so good. So um, definitely don't forget, forget about that. Um, um, aspects that you might have some fabulous parents in the school who could support. So practically then for the global citizenship uh, team, we will ask you the essential ask us, uh, questions, our uh, actions, our litter and waste audit, and we ask you to conduct a global awareness survey. So the litter and waste audit can be the same as your original review. Excuse me. Um, I have seen teachers that still had their original review, which would be brilliant because then you can immediately show that you have made an improvement uh, in the 10 years, how things used to be and how they are now. Because I more than likely 10 years ago, you probably didn't recycle properly in the school at all. I'd say up until five years ago, I could say to, to schools with 99% in, um, uh, being 99% sure that they didn't recycle in the school, but now you might have had a recycling system in the school, but it more than likely wasn't working properly. So you've made loads of improvements already. Um, and then, you you know, we will ask you to identify our areas for improvement that you could look at you. Because um, in the past, when you started to work, you probably would have looked at recycling first and possibly reusing. Uh, what we ask you to do now, if you look at the inverted pyramid, prevention is key first. Uh, so look at preventing waste, look at redu a reduction of waste. So um, looking at lunchbox waste, for example, one of your actions for your action plan could be that uh, we do a no waste, lunch, a free, a free, a waste free lunch, lunchbox day every um, month or every week or, you know, it depends on how you want to fill that in. But it creates uh, lots of awareness about the packaging that's around our food not just with the students, but at home as well, because it's, the students will go home and say, no, ma'am, we can't have any packaging around the food. So, um, you know, very simple action, easy to do, but um, it, it prevents waste. So that's a good one. You can look at food waste disposal. Um, you know, children might do a, a, a little research around food waste disposal, and they will find that at least one third of the waste that's uh, one third of the food that we buy in our uh, grocery shopping every week is actually wasted. And what kind of things can we do to reduce that waste? Um, all the classes could probably look at uh, electronic waste disposal. That's a huge problem as well, where you're immediately addressing the global dimension as well, because a lot of the electronic waste still ends up in developing countries. And the reason why it ends up in developing countries is because they want the waste because they know that there is, you know, um, a very precious metals in there uh, that they can uh, resell, but it's just the conditions under which they extract these precious metals is very, very dangerous and really bad for their health. So, um, and all that information is very readily available for children to find out. Um, 
So then the second one, uh, the essential action we ask you to do is um, do uh, the global awareness survey. So there's nine questions. Uh, you only have to do it with a representative sample of the school. So in primary, I wouldn't go lower than four class because the questions that are asked, like, you know, the younger children might be able to answer it. Um, it really is, uh, if we have a second, if we have any secondary schools here, um, 15% of the school population in secondary school is plenty, okay? And statistically, that would be viable to um, draw some conclusions. Uh, it really is about gauging existing awareness levels of different issues related to the global citizenship. So we ask questions, for example, can you name a locally grown seasonal fruit or vegetable that is available now? You know, that will give you an indication whether children understand about the, our food miles, where does our food come from? Um, you know, how important is it to buy local food that is in season? Why is it important? Um, you know, or there's another question about fair trade, for example. So why should we bear fair, buy fair trade? So it gives you an indication of what level of knowledge children might have uh, surrounding these issues. Um, can you give an example of a way that you're connected with people from the global south? Um, Africa, Asia, or South America. Do they understand that we're all so connected? Um, so we then ask you just to pick one of those questions, one of those topics to raise awareness on, okay? So if you find that you'd like to, um, you might live in a farming community and you might decide that you want to raise awareness about local grown food that is in season. Um, you know, that'd be a lovely one. A farmer might come in and uh, tell them about how he grows food. And so, you know, really lovely links that you can make with the local community. Um, you might find that fair trade is uh, knowledge is really low, so easy to raise uh, awareness about fair trade, even with the youngest one. I had a school here in my town that I was going in for a renewal visit the following day and I uh, was walking around the local supermarket and there were kids walk, running around, really young kids running around. Oh, here's one, here's one, here's one. And I was wondering what they were doing because it was, was that school's uniform. I recognized it. And they were picking out all the fair trade uh, products that were, that were on the shelf. So I went in the following day and said, well, you've passed already. You're doing fantastic work. So, uh, you know, it's so easy in some, some instances to raise awareness uh, about certain issues. Um, alternative actions that you can take, we have our global aware connection survey on the, the website where um, we ask questions like um, I once lived in or we eat or drink something that is grown in a different country or my favorite soccer player comes. So just create these links and get children to understand that even by enjoying uh, a soccer match, uh, especially now with all the teams in England, they all have um, soccer players from loads of different uh, countries around the world. So it's a lovely way to um, to identify those connections. And it could be lovely potential for celebration of and connection of various cultures, uh, action days, uh, project integration. Um, integration is really, really lovely because sometimes we're, especially, you know, in these times with lots and lots of uh, immigrant uh, children coming to our country and their parents might be living in a direct provision or they might be living in a hotel somewhere which is hor horrendous or in a tent which is even more horrendous but the children might be coming to school and it's very hard for the parents to be able to get that connection between the school but I have seen this a couple of in, in many schools actually at this stage where they had a cultural day in the school and you know, we're teaching about all the various cultures represented in the school and um, parents coming. It's very it, it, that's a very low threshold for parents to be coming in and showing what food or their costumes or or, um, you know, any, any other things that they want to share about their country. So it's a lovely thing to do. But again, it's only a suggestion. You don't have to go that big, but it is really nice. So step three, then, is your action plan. Um, very important lesson for children in itself. Um, have an action. Who is going to be responsible and when are you going to do it by? So that you are really, really strict about, OK, this is what we're going to do. We try to put in quantifiable targets if you can. So let's say reduce your waste by a further 10 percent. Um, 
um, could be. So don't set your targets too high. Definitely not because we want to be able to celebrate our achievements. Um, you can always add another quantifiable target when you have that reach and you think there might be another chance to reach some more. Um, but um, And don't make the time frame too long either, especially not in primary schools. So here are just some ideas for actions, but there's lots and lots um, more um, on the next slide, you can look into the global goals, research it, um, investigate where the recyclables go and what they're recycled into. I've seen that coming up a lot in application forms, uh, especially children might go visit their local amenity sites. And uh, that's available to a lot of schools as well. Looking into food waste and composting. Uh, if you can compost in the school, brilliant. Um, you can reduce your waste by a third at least. But if you can compost in the school, um, get the children to research like the best way to compost and send composting tips home. That is also an action that you can do. Looking at how other countries deal with waste management, fair trade, as I said before, for the older classes, even in primary school, but for secondary for secondary schools, uh, looking into the circular economy is amazing. Um, they, I'll be sharing the website uh, in a minute in the slides to um, show you where you can find information about the circular economy. We have some brilliant examples here in Ireland of producers who are literally not producing any waste and it's all circular. There's no linear, there's no waste at the end of it, which is great. Uh, investigating where your food, where your clothes is made or where your food comes from, a very easy exercise, literally 10 minutes in front of the class, asking children their favorite food, pointing out on a map or writing down which country that food is grown into, looking at their clothes where they're made, looking at their shoes where they're made. <laughs> Beware, you will get a smelly shoe under your nose, of course, because they mightn't be able to read it. But um, you will have 10 minutes and you have at least 30 different countries on, on your, your board. You know, that is a, a lesson into how we're so interdependent with lots and lots of different countries. Um, so step four, then you're monitoring and, and evaluation, repeating your survey, having regular meetings. Children in primary school especially are definitely not shy of telling you when uh, a teacher or students are not doing what they should be doing in the class. Um, doing mini review on procurement, like are people satisfied with the new products? If you have decided to make the um, staff room fair trade, for example definitely go back and make sure that everyone is happy with the fair trade tea and the fair fair trade coffee because if they're not and they're bringing in their own berries tea or lion's tea uh, from uh, from home uh, you know then you're not making any any difference so you know there might be different uh, fair trade products on the market you can try it out or you know or drop that bit and then try something else so you know there is no you know look at your failures as well it's it is very important and it's important for the children to realize that we don't always get it right so this creating graphs and charts to uh, represent the changes you've made we actually created this um a resource during the pandemic when children when we were afraid that people would want to go into the bins to look at what waste they had in the bin because that is still always the best way to see what kind of waste you have in the bin to find out where you can make the biggest difference but um we created these charts to put charts to put next to the bin and let children fill in what they're putting into the bin when they're putting it in and then you have a graph straight away straight after to show you you know which classes have more of this and more of that uh, so that can be found in this resource and uh, in this resource you will also find the conversion rates because I know we know that uh, schools often uh, measure their waste in bags or bins or but we do need them in uh, kilograms in our application forms to get a better uh, view on uh, reductions of waste uh, to landfill or uh, reductions in recycling. Um, so the conversion charts are here. They're, of, of course, not perfect, but they're very close to what they're more than likely going to, to, to weigh approximately. Um, and there's another few tips in that as well and how to do your uh, waste review uh, in those as well. So uh, step five, then your curriculum links. 
Um, we've created the Green Schools Global Goals Book Club. Uh, we started that in uh, the first year of 2020, the first year of the pandemic. And um, it's encouraged about reading and learning about the Global Goals at the same time. And there's lots of activities associated with it. So we actually have a book for each of the Global Goals. Uh, we're going to uh, promote them. Myself and Jamal are chatting about it today. We're going to be promoting them again, and there's going to be new content uh, this year as well, uh, which is going to be very exciting content, actually. It uh, sounds like really nice ideas. And um, so it's a lovely way to engage and learn about the sustainable development goals. There is, um, for, there is a book readings for younger classes. Uh, for junior and senior infants, it's all part on. It's all on the the book club page. You can click in one of the global goals. Lots of lovely uh, activities associated with it. You don't have to do them all. You can do one, or you can do two, or you can just do the reading. Uh, it's up to you. But it's a lovely way to learn about the sustainable development goals. Then at Christmas time, we will have a global advance calendar, which will be great fun as well. Um, and the Our World Eyes 8 Award. I know a lot of primary schools are um, uh, contributing to that as well. So if you're doing if you're doing something for the for these awards, make it part of your green schools program. Don't do them in separation. If you know one class is doing something for this, it's part of green schools, okay? And then you know all the other links to all the different resources that are available. World Mapper is a lovely look where they. Uh, create different uh, sizes of the world and different views of the world depending on what you put in. So you might put in which countries um, uh, uh, have uh, oh, released more greenhouse gases. Um, you know, you will see the whole developed world like us and America blown up to proportion. And then you might see who is uh, most affected by climate change. And then, of course, you'll see the lesser developed country blown up. Lots and lots of different things to see on that map. It's a lovely way to uh, look at the world. So step six, informing and involving the whole school and the wider uh, community. Um, of course, it, within the school, your notice board is important. Um, what I said earlier on, linked to the cur curriculum as well, what is really good if you were able to chat to all the other teachers in the school, maybe during a, a, a you know an overall meeting, just tell them what the team that you're working on for green schools is about and ask them what they are already planning that is going on in their class that might suit with what you're doing for green schools. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel at all. It can be something that is happening in the school already. It's all for the same cause, which is you know, saving the environment and making sure that there's no poverty and no hunger in the world and that we're all living on a good planet. Um, so if you were to do that, like you can give those classes then an opportunity to showcase their work on the Green Schools Notice Board, which would be really nice. Um, you know, other things that you can put on the Green Schools Notice Board, your information on fair trade, other eco labels. Um, for the older classes, maybe you want to say, okay, um, let's invite an MEP if you have an MEP in your locality. Um, they're always happy to, if they have the time, they will come and speak to you because what the kids are doing in Green Schools, they're doing in the European Parliament as well, which is really fantastic. So, um, that's really nice. Use your local newspapers, magazines, local newsletters, uh, writing different articles. Uh, if you write the article, send in a picture. If a sixth class student, fifth class student writes the article with a bit of help and puts in a picture, most, lo a picture, most local newsletters will be delighted to print it, even local newspapers. So um, make use of that. So then as part as you're informing and involving, of course, you need to have a whole school day of action. And that can be anything, um, it can be as big or as small as you want it to be as well. So there's a few ideas here that you can um, can look at. I mentioned the cultural days already. You could link in with the UN International Day, link in with uh, things that we are doing, you know, like we are running the Advent Calendar, Global Goals Advent Calendar again in, uh, I think, starting on the 27th of November, if I have it right. And... Um, you know, if you get the whole school possibly to engage with with that, it's on the 30th of November we're starting. You could get the whole school to engage with that. That could be a day of action. 
you know, one of those days, or you might want to pick one goal that you would do something on. So, um, you know, use our support as well. Um, linking in with UN International Days, I've said before, World Water Day, 22nd 2nd of March, we always have at least three events around the country that you could participate in, but you could organise your own one as well. Uh, Climate Action Week is coming up on the 16th of October to the 22nd. We've just had Sustainable Development, uh, the SDG Week, from the 18th of September to the 22nd of September. Uh, and we've be, we're running a slogan competition, which I will come to later as well, which will run until the 22nd of October, the 20th of October is the deadline for submissions on that. So um, that could Thank be you. Can I jump in? There's um, a question in the chat um, for you. Um, yeah. Do you want it now or do you want to wait till the end? No, go on, shoot it. Um, okay, so it's from Emily and she just says, Hi, this is my first year in the green flag role. My school is preparing for the global citizenship flag. Do I apply for the assessment in the spring of 2025? Emily, is this your, this is your first year uh, working on this team, is it? Yeah, it's my first year working on. Sorry, um, uh, is it the school? Is it the school's first year working on the global citizenship litter and waste? No, I think it's their second year. Okay, well then, like then you uh, have they handed it over to you properly? Uh, in terms of um, uh, what they did last year for the team. Uh, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure where we are with it, to be honest. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? If you can find out if stuff was going on last year, uh, there mightn't have been, you know, sometimes that happens. Okay. Um, but if you can find out, you know, some of the students that might be, have been involved in the committee last year, ask them, they will know. Uh, but yeah. if their principal will probably know, uh, is the last year's coordinator isn't in the school anymore? No, they aren't. No, no. Okay, so that, that's going to be different. The, the principal might know. Uh, what yeah flag last year uh, and if nothing went on last year then I would suggest you use this as your first year working on the global citizenship litter and waste team and then you apply for the the uh, you apply for the flag in in spring of 2025 you're right in March. okay okay perfect yeah All thank right. you thank right. you thank you okay so then um you know lots of international days that you can link in with some examples here but there's loads more as well um, and then we come to uh, step seven, your green code. And that is basically the statement of the school's commitment to your uh, environmentally friendly actions, in, and in this case, on a global scale. So these are team specific. Um, what is lovely about this one is it's step seven, but you can start with this as well. So it would be a great way to get people in the school involved in knowing what's going on, what team we're working on. So Emily, that might be a lovely way for you to start and say, you know, get get a committee together, get a committee to maybe put up posters saying what it's about and start with a slogan competition, because it can be as simple as a slogan for the green code. And then, you know, maybe the SDG week slogan competition, you know, you could throw it in for that one as well. It would be lovely. So you have to, you know, to do two things at the same time. Um, but for this team, you can also, you know, if you really want to look at global citizenship and citizenship in general, you could get the Green Schools Committee over the year to write a green policy for the school and get the Green Schools Committee to uh, say, OK, um, this is what we do in our school and ask them to get it passed by the board of management, by the principal and get it printed in the homework journal. That would be a great lesson about policy writing and how important it is to have things in uh, written down and on policy to say, listen, this is the policy of the school. This is what we need to do. But again, you can make this as big or as small as you want it to be. Great. Thank you. So uh, the support for the global citizenship teams then, uh, Global Goals Week's competition is still running. I should change that day. It's, uh, I think it was just too, too early, but it's because we are uh, SDG champions and it's the government of Ireland. They are running this, uh, this early. So we have no choice but to do it this early, even though I said it's, not, it's really difficult to engage schools this early in, uh, in the school year because we're all so busy. Uh, the Global Classrooms Project workshops uh, will come up later on as well. 
Uh, we have some CPD training for teachers. There are limited places as well. So that's designed on training uh, to be able to deliver a, um, a workshop around the SDG in your own classroom. And we have secondary school CPD training as well. Then we have our Global Goals Book Club, as I spoke about, the Advent Calendar. And we will have Global Goals Week in uh, February, uh, Global Goals Week in February 24, of course. Sorry. No matter how often you look at your presentation, there's always mistakes. But I will share um, this little video of last year's um, uh, Global Goals Week, which we run with our partner countries in Kenya, South Africa and Dubai. So I'll just share this with you just to, so you get a flavor of the event. This is open to every school. Good morning, everyone. Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm Ed. The reason we're speaking to you is because we are United Nations Youth Delegates. So, so some of the cool things that we got to do when we were in New York. Um, because just one of my biggest passions is is swimming and uh, swimming in the ocean. And I. life in Kenya means due to the impacts of climate change. What type of animals do you think of when you think of Kenya? I think there was one person who said wildebeest. I'm very happy to wonder if considered here is what we call the wildebeest migration. And I know the pressure from the build of thousands of wildebeest will cause the... And I hope maybe you can all plan a time to visit Kenya and experience this magic. Yeah. All right, guys, so let's have some fun. And water generator. So basically, it can generate water out of no, like, you know, like basically thin air. So yeah, so uh, I think the rain making would be a good solution for us. Yes, my name is Milton. There's so much plastic in the river, it's so sad to see. You In Murakos National School, so in our school, we're trying to um, reduce the lack of plastic that we're using. Like, big investors can like invest in like the cloud seeding in Kenya. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Just gives you a little flavor of Global Goals Week. It's just wonderful. We started this project with our partners in. Uh, in Kenya, South Africa, and Dubai uh, last year. We hope to add more, more countries. Hopefully Ghana will join and possibly Georgia that I have to reach out to. But it's a really lovely uh, thing to do. So this is the slogan com uh, competition. And I know that uh, Siobhan is putting in a link to the um, to the form. Um, oh, sugar. Um, now in the chat, so make sure you take that. Uh, it's open to everyone, and the, we're giving away five packs of the Global Goals book uh, books as a prize. And within each book, then there is a QR code that links directly to all the activities. So it's a pack of um, 23 books for your classroom, and they're all lovely, lovely, lovely stories. So uh, I hope you join us in that competition. And then this is our Global Classrooms project that I've been talking about. So. Uh, this year, we're uh, learning about nine different goals, as I said, hopefully with uh, at least four countries, but possibly six countries. We offer two free in-person class visits to 10 schools in Ireland, and um, you will be engaging then with, with uh, the, the, these schools throughout the year from January onwards. So you uh, can express your interest if you're interested in this in the form that... Um, Siobhan is posting in the uh, the chat there now, and um, you can express your interest for CPD training in that form as well or for any other of the uh, events that we're having this year. So please do. So then again, more links and resources on our own website, stay at home, global citizenship, like I mean, we created so many online content 
actually have the online content that we created. This isn't even online yet because it's, it's, it's we're afraid it's going to crash the website. But there's lots and lots there. Um, MyWaste.ie is brilliant. And as I said, you can learn about the circle economy on that way, uh, website as well. It's very interesting. Uh, we were surprised. We did a, a, a bunch of with about 27 teachers on uh, CPD last year on climate change and uh, the circle economy training. And uh, we were amazed with how few people that, that had actually heard of this circle economy. You know, when you're entrenched in an uh, you know, in a subject like, you know, we are looking at the environment, we think everyone knows, but obviously, of course, not everyone knows. So we definitely need to raise more awareness about the circle economy because it's 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 um, it's fantastic. And as I said, fantastic ideas here in Ireland alone. So then uh, closepop.ie, as I mentioned, are one of our sponsors. And uh, they are delighted to uh, get contacts from schools if they want to hold a clothes recycling event. So I'm not sure whether they bring a big bin or not, but uh, you can contact Joe. Uh, there is his number. You can look at the website. Uh, but I think his number or his email was probably the best one to, to reach him. But um, they are delighted and they're so delighted because they only they were only sponsoring us for five years. But they were so delighted that they've actually given me some money to do an exchange project with some uh, Kenyan students. So um, who will come over in April, which is brilliant. And they're going to fund us for an extra five years. So um, don't hesitate to contact them if you want to hold a closed recycling event in the school. Uh, Climate Action Weeks, as I said, is taking place from the 16th to the 22nd of October this year. Uh, this is for secondary school students. Uh, so Climate Smarts at eeu.ntashka.org. It's a nice project, but I don't think I have any secondary schools here today, have I? Um, then we have the SAI workshops starting up again this year. They're great fun. I know that Claire is very busy training up uh, staff to deliver them. And uh, you can book them uh, now on the website uh, already. So if you're interested in uh, getting these workshops to the schools, they're well worth it. Uh, let's Fix Fashion campaign, fantastic campaign, but I think we're full up. Uh, although she said today, to me today that we might be able to take another sh uh, few schools, but it's only for secondary schools. So if there's no secondary schools here today, this one isn't for you. But there is some fast fashion material coming primary schools way, uh, hopefully next year. Um, so then uh, we have our website. Keep an eye on it. Uh, keep an eye on the online uh, application form. So you go to the apply button and uh, you register there uh, for if you are new you more than likely have to contact our IT uh, or Sheila or Rishaba to get access to it uh, if you if you um, because you might know the, the password because your school would probably already have a password but if you have it you can just log in there I do um, strongly strongly recommend that you start filling in that form right from the word go once you have your committees sorted put it start putting in the names uh, as long as you don't press submit we can, we don't look at it we, we don't even have time to look at it which i don't think we even can look at it and um you but it's just saved you so much time towards the end get your students to do it as well you know they are more than um, capable of writing a little story about your day of action or about uh, the actions you are taking or filling in your action plan or what they're doing in the curriculum that links into the, to your school. Uh, we don't worry about uh, any uh, spelling mistakes or anything um, as long as we can understand what it says. So, uh, and then of course, uh, we have uh, your, if you're in your second year working on the team, your uh, application form needs to be submitted by the end of March. Uh, the renewal visit uh, should take place between now and then. Please don't leave it to the last minute because, you know, in some counties, like if you look at Cork County, like we could have 120 schools that need renewal visits and there might be two or if there, we're lucky, three of us 
that can facilitate them, but we won't be able to physically fit it in in the last month in March where you all want it. A renew visit is called a renew visit because you don't have to have everything done. So even if you've only three steps done or four steps done, look at it as a visit to a support visit to your school to support you to get some feedback from your environmental awareness officer oh you can do this or as you heard ella saying there they have so many they have workshops they have the tree for the sea campaign you might have forgotten about it ella comes in and she said like oh sure that's there for you to participate in you don't have to organize anything and you know it, it really is worth it so try to book them in you can book them in from now on all right. And then again, we're going back to our national award ceremonies face to face like we did last year, which was nerve wracking, but great fun once we were in it. Like I was so happy to be back face to face in person with people. But it was a bit scary at the start after being uh, sitting behind your computer for two years. So and then, of course, you need to celebrate your successes. Uh, this is a QR code for our newsletter. Um, Javon is putting in the link as well. It's you know it's easy to read. It gives you headlines, um, uh, but it gives you lots and lots of information. We try to post as much as possible in our newsletter. So, um, you might think of a question or two, but I would like to launch the uh, poll. And just to get some feedback on the seminar and uh, how you're feeling. So we, I'm launching it there now. Uh, so we're going to ask you to rate your knowledge before the seminar presentation, rate it after on a level from one to five. And then we will ask you to um, look at the different topics and what topics you were attracted to. So please, if you could do that for me, uh, that would be great. Uh, and in the meantime, I will share the uh, contact details of the environmental awareness officer with you. And once we're done, I will share our own contact details as well. Thank you very much. thank you so much brilliant thanks very much for that um there's something i need to do not just share the results i'm sorry this is the first time i'm doing this again so yeah that's great um yeah so that's it really guys if i um i will share our contact details so there you go. So I'm based in Munster. Siobhan is based in Munster. Vicky is Connacht. But we cover, you know, um, we can we can be in contact via email uh, anywhere or, or via phone. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it's up to you. Um, no problem. Contact us anytime. Sorry, I'm after losing you. Can't see you. Um, so, any questions from anyone? No? Well, thank you so much for attending. It's been great. Great, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and um, hopefully it has been helpful. Uh, don't forget to um, download the um, links from the chat. I'll give you another few minutes and then we're eight minutes past seven i'm starving <laughs> i think my dinner i can smell my dinner it's ready yes there's just one question there um yeah. can we use the logos on our posters and displays sorry say that again can we use the logo on our posters and displays so the green schools logo i i assume you can yeah you can of course you can great you're green schools you're part of the family <laughs> cool. hey guys so thank you so much for attending it was brilliant to see you all